Hello, my name is Kevin Pires. I am a Senior Technical Sales Specialist with Expo. In today's 15 minutes or less, we're going to be going over the setup of the MAX 945 Optical Loss Test Set from Expo. So this is the MAX 945 Optical Loss Test Set from Expo. It has different configurations. This particular port here is the Transmit or the Fast Test Port. And this port here is the power meter port. So these will be the two ports that we will be working with today. Once you launch the Max Tester, in the top left, you'll see OLTS, Optical Loss Test Set. I'll go ahead and run that application. Once the OLT application starts, we can go ahead with the setup. One of the first things I like to do is set the user preferences. So in the bottom right, I'll select User Preference. And this is where I can set my distance unit measurement. Right now I have it set for kilometers, but I can set it for meters, feet, kilofeet, or miles. Everything else is fairly self-explanatory. You'll see the default save folder location. If you are testing with a older legacy Expo optical loss test set, like the FOT 930 or the FTB 3930, this is where you can select the option to test against those units. The next tab over is the optical power meter. This is just to set the favorites of the different wavelengths that you want to test. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And this will bring us back to the main screen. From here, I want to set a test configuration. So this particular unit has four different test configurations in here. So your unit might vary. All of our test sets should have a default, which is usually where you want to start. You can set custom configurations for different types of test applications, like, a, like in an upon environment, a backhaul or front haul environment, in a data center. There are different types of test configurations that can be used. So in this case, I'm going to use default. And to give you an idea of what's in default, I'll go ahead and select it, and I'll hit modify. And we can look at the configuration details. So we have different types of reference types, and in this case, we're just going to set unspecified because this is a default generic setup. So we want it to be as generic as possible. If you want to do ORL, or optical return loss, it is selected by default, so I have that selected on. In the pass-fail environment, this is where we can set our minimum and maximum um, ORL and link lengths and loss. So if you know what or if you have it budgeted within your particular test to have these thresholds set, you can go ahead and set it here. So typically we see link URL at 27 to 32 dB. Now, of course, link length and link loss will vary depending on your network. This last tab is the optical power meter pass fail. So if you are taking measurements for power or loss and you have set thresholds, you can input those in as well. And for these pass fails, I'm going to go ahead and just leave them blank because all I care about is raw values. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then close it out. And that was the test configuration. During the next step, I want to set up some sort of identification. So if I'm doing file saves or if I'm doing any sort of reporting, setting up proper values for identification is important. So I'll go ahead and launch the identification option. And so window opens up. So right now, the only identifier that we're using is cable ID. If you look in the bottom left, you'll see the file name preview is cable.olts. Because cable is the only identifier that is selected right now, which really doesn't give us a lot of information. At the bare minimum, I like to have A location, B location, and fiber ID. At the very bare minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and enable Fiber ID, and I'm going to have it increment. So what that means is as soon as I save the file or save the test, it'll increment up to the next value. So right now it's going to start at number one and then go to number two. If for some reason I was starting at number 13, I can, I can click this and change this to 13. But in this case, I'll just leave it at one. Now, if I want to set A and B locations, I can do that as well. So under Fiber ID, I can drop this down. 
and I can select location A. I can also put some custom identifiers in here. So if it's an OLT or an ONT or some sort of internal name convention, you can put that in here as well. So I'll go ahead and set location A, and I'll go ahead and set a location B, and then I will give those some sort of a value. So for location A, we can say LACA01, and for location B, we'll put in there SFCA01. And so over here on the right, we want to make sure to enable those. And you'll see in the file name preview, those will be active. And so with that, I'll go ahead and hit OK. Because right now we are identifying cable. And we can even give it a cable number if we'd want. So we want to identify this as a specific cable. We can say the uh, PCH trunk in this example. So right now we have it PCH Fiber 1 LA to San Francisco dot OLTS. So this gives us quite a bit more information. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And so we've set up our user preferences. We've selected our tense configuration and we're using default. And we've inputted the values for, ide for our identifiers. So now we just need to set up a test. So in the top left here, we see two wavelengths, 13 and 1550 in this particular configuration. It is important to test a long and a short wavelength if you can, so you can verify if there's any pinching fiber management issues. And so I have those two selected. I'll go over here to the right and set new reference. And so we have three different types of references, side by side, which is where the remote and the main unit need to come together and they reference directly to each other. You have loopback, where the units will reference back onto themselves and then share that reference information with the far end. So the two units do not have to come together. This is probably the most common reference. And the last one is no reference, which I don't recommend. And basically, if the two units are too far to do a side by side, you can select no reference. In this case, we'll select loopback and then we'll hit next. Now you need to identify a unit as a main unit or a remote. In this case, we're the main unit. We'll go and hit next. And now we'll start the reference. So basically, it's telling us to plug in a test jumper from the source port over to the power meter port. So you just loop it back onto yourself. It's very important that there's no pinches or bends in the fiber. It is also critically important to inspect and clean your connectors as necessary. This is really, really important. You need to have high quality jumpers that are free of any contamination. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. We'll loop it back onto itself. And so as soon as the unit sees some sort of signal, you'll see the set reference is no longer grayed out. I can select it and now it's going to do a quick reference. And so if the values are within acceptable limits, for a standard loopback, you'll see that it'll be green. If for some reason, I'm going to go ahead and put a pinch in the fiber. I'll go ahead and retry. If for some reason we have too much attenuation, you'll see that we have a fail here. So I'm going to go ahead and retry without that pinch. And we have a nice, clean, good reference. So I'll go ahead and hit next. And now it's asking us to do an extra step. This is a verification of the jumper. So essentially what is happening here is when you loop back the fiber onto itself, the power meter detector um, on the other side of the test jumper isn't a ferrule to ferrule connection. It's not a physical connection where the two ferrules touch. The power meter is basically a cavity that just captures light. So there's no physical connection. So there's, you know, you're not truly testing the end face of the jumper when it's terminated. And so if you want to truly represent the reference that takes into account a terminated end face, you need to do the verification. Now, with that said, if you have a clean connector that you've inspected and it's free of any damage or contamination, there's a very good chance that you're not going to have any issues here. And in a standard telecom environment, you can probably skip this test.
And so again, if you want ultimate accuracy, you need to do the verification. But in this case here, I'm just gonna skip it for simplicity's sake. I have a nice clean jumper that I trust, that I've inspected. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this one additional step. And so once I've done that, then I'm ready to test with the main unit. So you see the graphic shows you taking that test jumper, plugging it into the device under test. So I'll go ahead and hit finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same unit to represent the far end. So on the far end, you're going to want to inspect and clean your connectors, just like you've done on this side. And essentially what you're going to do on the far end, the remote side, is you're going to select the two wavelengths you want to test. You're going to hit set new reference. And in this case, we did loop back. And in a telecom environment, loop back is probably going to be the most common because the units are typically not together. And then we'll hit next. And we're going to select this as the remote unit and hit next. And then we'll run through the reference procedure as we did with the main unit. So we have the loop back, and then it's going to ask if we want to do a verification. And again, in this case, I'm going to skip it, and I'm going to hit finish, and now I'm ready to test. And so you'll see this is what it looks like on the remote side. And so basically all you're doing is waiting for the main side to start testing. So you'll unplug your jumper from the power meter port, and you'll plug it into your device under test. So now that we have the main unit set for the proper user configuration, proper test configuration, and all the values for the identifiers, as well as a reference on both the main unit and the remote unit, and they're both plugged into the device under test, we can start testing. So we'll go and hit start fast test in the top right, and the main unit communicate with the remote unit, and we'll start seeing results. So in just a few seconds, we see our information. So we see we're testing PCH Fiber 1, LA to San Francisco, and then we see our 1310 to 1550 average loss, as well as our A to B optical return loss at both wavelengths as well. If I wanted to store this result in the bottom right here, I'll hit store, and then it'll save that one. So you see we're at one of one right now. And if I wanted to test another one, I'd go ahead and hit start test. So we'd clean and inspect, or inspect and clean rather, and go to the next fiber, hit start test, and then we're off and running again. And we start getting results for that as well. Go ahead and store that. If I wanted to see the details of this particular test, I go to the details tab, and then you can get you can drill down a little bit further in. If you want to see what our results are up to this point, you can see the two tests that we've done, fiber one and fiber two. And if we need to retest something, we can do that from here and then retest. Of course, units also support text messaging if you need to communicate to the far end. You can do that as well. And that'll send to the far end. So you're basically just testing back and forth. And once you're done testing all the different fibers, so let's say we needed to test you know, 96 fibers and we hit 96, once we're done, we just simply hit save, and then we can save this test however you would like. So right now it's saving as the identifiers that we set. In this particular location that we told it to, I go and hit OK, and then we're good to go. So from here on out, you're basically just managing the test results. So you'll put it on a USB drive or push it across the network, and then do your reporting as needed. And that's it in a nutshell. Thank you very much for joining us on this 15 minutes or less a quick setup of the Max 945 Optical Loss Test Set from Expo. If you have any additional questions, please visit us at www.expo.com. Thank you very much.